Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar experts, community projects, and heat pump specialists. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolved News. It's another busy week, but before we get into today's stories, two quick corrections from last week's show. First, I noted on screen last week that Volkswagen had been forced to halt production due to supply issues caused by the current conflict in the Middle East. It was, in fact, Volvo, not Volkswagen. The second correction is that during our final story on e-bike bans at NREL, I neglected to mention that while NREL has banned e-bikes and e-scooters inside of its buildings, staff can still ride to NREL facilities where there are dedicated racks for e-bikes and e-scooters that offer charging. As always, we endeavour to keep our reporting accurate, and I'm sorry in this case, we didn't. We start with some excellent and exciting news about EV adoption rates now, specifically EV adoption rates in Aotearoa, or New Zealand. According to sales data just published, EV sales in the nation during December rose to their highest ever levels, with more plug-in vehicles sold than internal combustion-engined ones. EVs accounted for 39% of all cars registered, with a significant number of them comprising of grey market Nissan Leafs from Japan. Plug-in hybrids, meanwhile, accounted for another 12%. It's believed the threat that the government may soon end EV subsidies plus implementation of a new ute tax that increases the cost of running petrol and diesel vehicles caused the spike. But be warned, Kiwi plug-in owners will soon have to start paying RUC, that's road user charges, from April 1st. Elon Musk surprised everyone on Monday this week by making some thinly veiled threats on X that if he didn't get some form of increased voting power at Tesla, he wouldn't expand Tesla's AI development. We don't have the time to go in-depth here, although we have made a video on the subject, but it's worth noting that right now Elon Musk holds around 13% of Tesla. Something he suggested on X wasn't enough to ensure he wasn't ousted by what he referred to as, quote, dubious interests, end quote. He did suggest that he'd be fine with a dual class voting structure, which means he'd retain his current shareholding, but as CEO, his vote would carry more weight than standard shareholders. It's not clear what his motivations are, but it'll be interesting to see how shareholders and Wall Street respond to the news. This month, we've seen yearly delivery figures for various automakers trickle in, and this week we got Mercedes-Benz's global sales figures for last year. And impressively, Mercedes-Benz's EV sales dramatically took off last year, with one in three cars sold with Benz or smart badging coming with a plug. Although that figure does include plug-in hybrids, which accounted for 19% of all sales for the brand, the figures for EVs sold under both passenger car brands aren't to be sniffed at, with 222,000 Mercedes-Benz and 18,000 smart cars sold being all electric. At the same time, Mercedes-Benz Vans reported it sold 22,700 electric vans, which is maybe why these G-Wagons were doing donuts of joy at CES earlier this month. It's no secret that the world's oil companies have known for a really long time about the impacts of burning massive amounts of fossil fuels on our world climate. And while there have been successful court cases resulting in massive fines for the oil and gas industry, they have, for the most part, gotten away with encouraging massive air pollution. This week, though, good news from the US Supreme Court, which declined a request to move a court case brought against Coke Industries, the American Petroleum Institute and ExxonMobil by the state of Minnesota. The plaintiffs had pushed for the case to be made a federal one, but for the third time in a year, SCOTUS decided that cases against big oil for their role in climate change should be heard in the state where it was filed. Justice cometh. At least, we can hope it will. 
For a really long time, Japan has been considered the home of the hydrogen fuel cell revolution. And while automakers like Toyota and Korean company Hyundai have tried to bring hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to other markets around the world, they've never really taken off. The reason for this, for the most part, is that hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles offer few benefits over battery electric vehicles. They have to rely on expensive and unreliable filling infrastructure and have less interior space for occupants and luggage due to the relative size of hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain components. Now, it seems even Japanese customers are ditching hydrogen fuel cells, with data from Hydrogen Insight claiming that fuel cell car sales in Japan have fallen by 83% over the last two years, replaced almost exclusively by battery electric vehicle sales instead. It's long been a claim of EV naysayers that the transition to electric vehicles will bring the electrical grid to its knees, cause widespread blackouts and make electricity more expensive for everyone. Yet a new publication from the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy, or ACEEE for short, shows that's a long way from the truth. Summarising three different independent studies, the organisation shows there's now very strong evidence to show that the more electric cars on the road, the better the electricity grid will become, thanks to a better distributed electrical load across the grid. Additionally, thanks to expected charging patterns of EVs, it points out that electrical grid generation will be more consistent, reducing peaks and troughs across the day and making electricity a lot cheaper to generate, since more predictable consumption means less reliance on expensive peaker power plants. Frankly, it's great news for everyone. Solid state battery specialist QuantumScape which is partly owned by Volkswagen, published details of a brand new cell design this week that is unlike anything we've seen before. Called the Flex Frame Cell, the design mixes properties of pouch cells and prismatic cells, resulting in a battery cell design that's capable of expanding and contracting as the battery is charged and discharged and as ambient temperatures change. It helps alleviate some of the mechanical stress and strain that's traditionally plagued solid-state battery design and should lead to a longer lifespan when compared to traditional solid-state battery cell setups. If you want to think of it slightly differently, it's almost like QuantumScape has given cells the ability to breathe as they take on and to give out electrical charge. One of the biggest frustrations people seem to have with public charging infrastructure for EVs, other than reliability, are the massive hoops that you have to jump through just to pay for charging. But in Europe, things are about to get a whole lot easier for EV drivers thanks to the European Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Regulation, which, it's just been confirmed, will come into effect on April 13th this year. What does it do? Well, it mandates that from that date, all new DC fast charging stations open to the public must have either a card reader or contactless payment capability, while lower power stations must have dynamic QR code authentication to enable a similar seamless charging experience. Existing stations have until 2027 to retrofit to the same payment options. At last! After it was launched in Europe some time ago as the Fiat Ducato EV, Stellantis has officially launched the same electric panel van in North America under the Ram Promaster EV nameplate. Entering into a market that's already occupied by the Ford e-Transit and Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter, not to mention the Rivian EDV and GM Bright Drop delivery vehicles, the Ram Promaster EV looks very much like its gasoline sibling, but packs a 110 kilowatt hour battery pack and up to 150 kilowatts of DC fast charging capability. Stellantis says it will be offered in a variety of different guises, including delivery and cargo configurations, with a range of up to 162 miles, that's 260 kilometres. That might not seem like much, but it's well within the daily delivery routes of most US carriers in most urban and suburban areas. 
When Tesla began deliveries of its Cybertruck, it showed a video in which a Tesla Cybertruck towed a Porsche 911 on a trailer faster over a claimed quarter mile than an identical Porsche 911 could drive over the same distance. Shortly after the event, plenty of people noted that the video Tesla showed didn't demonstrate a quarter mile race, but rather an eighth of a mile race. And there's been plenty of online discussion about this. Last weekend, Engineering Explained became the latest YouTube channel to weigh in on the matter, indicating in a frankly excellent video how Tesla's video appears to be misleading, noting that there were discrepancies between what Tesla showed and what Tesla claimed, as well as what the maths suggested was actually possible. Almost immediately following that video's release, however, Tesla's lead engineer for Cybertruck spoke out, noting the fact that the quarter mile was an eighth of a mile demonstration wasn't due to any other reason than safety, stating that the trailer they were using wasn't rated for the speed that the full quarter mile would have resulted in the trailer traveling. We are not passing judgment, we're just reporting who said what. Our short shorts are coming in a moment, but first, a word from one of today's long-standing video sponsors, Energy Sage. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing solar panels, help you join a community solar program, or get a heat pump installed. I used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. Follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free, no obligation services and get the ball rolling today. If you choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will get a small referral fee too, so you'll be helping us out at the same time. And now it's time for short shorts. Solar specialist Lightyear has officially shelved its plans to build any future solar electric cars. As part of its restructuring following last year's bankruptcy, the company now says that it will focus on building solar cells for the automotive industry instead. As Sixt dumps any plans to continue purchasing Teslas for use on its rental fleet, it signed a massive deal with Stellantis this week that will see it add Stellantis-branded ICE and electric vehicles to its fleet. Sixt wants a minimum of 70% of its fleet to be electric by 2030. To date, BYD has shipped its electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles to Europe using commercial shipping solutions. But at the end of last week, it officially began shipping its own vehicles using its own cargo ships. Its first cargo ship, called Explorer No. 1, is already en route to Europe with EVs on board. Tesla has long struggled with quality control issues in its early production vehicles, and it looks like the Cybertruck is no exception. Non-Tesla employees who are now taking delivery are noting some big quality control concerns with trim pieces. That said, fit and finish of new vehicles is generally poor across the industry, regardless of who makes them. Last year, electric bus manufacturer and battery specialist Proterra entered into bankruptcy protection and there were plenty of rumours flying around as to what would happen next. This week, we learned that Proterra's transit arm, Proterra Transit, has been acquired by Phoenix Motor, securing its future. Nissan has officially delayed the start of production for two new electric vehicle models at its Canton production facility in Mississippi. The delays add to a previous three-month delay announced last year, and now production on the new Nissan and Infiniti models won't begin until late 2026. At the Tokyo Auto Salon this week, Hyundai announced that it will start offering end performance parts for its range of EVs, allowing customers to add performance tuning tweaks to their cars. Performance parts will loosely be based on those found on the Ionic 5N concept. It's still some way away from its official production reveal, but Dodge was teasing new images this week on X of its current production intent vehicle undergoing testing in Detroit. The official Charger EV reveal is not until later this year, so expect more teasers as that date approaches. 
Reporting from Reuters suggests that Volkswagen is in talks with established solid-state battery company Blue Solutions, owned by Bellore, to secure solid-state lithium metal batteries in addition to any potential battery supplies it gains from its shareholding in QuantumScape. Volvo Truck's FH and FM Electric models, as well as FL Electric and FE Electric, are now officially eligible for the UK government's Electric Truck Incentive Programme. The first truck company to qualify for the programme, organisations can now claim up to £25,000 sterling towards buying one. Ford has confirmed that it expects to begin production on its all-new electric Explorer EV for the European market this coming June and says a second all-new electric model will be due by the end of the year. The Explorer EV will be the first Ford-badged vehicle built on Volkswagen's NEB platform. Following the reveal of Kia's modular electric vehicle concepts at CES just a few weeks ago, Uber and Kia have already signed a memorandum of understanding that will see Kia supply Uber with vehicles for its ride-hailing service. Kia wants to begin production of them this year. While it has delayed plans to produce two new electric sedans in the US, Nissan has just unveiled its Nissan Aria Nismo, a JDM special of its Aria crossover with a sporty body kit, tweaked drivetrain and 316 kilowatts of power at the wheels. Like other eligible models, you can now get US federal tax credits applied at point of sale to new Tesla Model Y or Model X dual motor variants that qualify for the incentives. The changes to how the federal tax credit works should mean more EVs get purchased as people won't have to wait until tax time to get their purchase rebate. A Chinese company called BetterVolt has just unveiled a new atomic energy battery. While the concept isn't new, it uses semiconductor converters to turn radioactive decay from nickel-63 into electrical current, and it claims the battery could last 50 years without needing to be recharged. Stellantis has announced that it will temporarily lay off 2,250 workers at its Mirafiori plant in Torino, Italy, where the Fiat 500e is made. When half of those laid off on work will work on the electric vehicle production line. Stellantis blames weakened EV demand for the layoffs. The United States is now deploying an average of 125 new charging stations every single day. That's equivalent to 46,000 stalls per year. While there are currently more NAC stalls nationwide, there are more than three times the locations where you can find a CCS charging station. Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Motoring caught a chance to drive a pre-production Porsche Macan this week in the US in what appears to be the first public long-range test. He managed 300 miles, 482 kilometers on a single charge. Although some automakers are now pushing back hard against previous EV production promises, Volvo Cars CEO confirmed this week that he sees tremendous growth in the EV marketplace, reaffirming in Davos, Switzerland, that the company is fully committed to an all-electric future. Hyundai has unveiled a special version of its Kona EV in Europe called the Kona Electric N Line. While it looks the part with sporty accents, don't get too excited because the N Line amounts to adding sporty styling accents and interior to what is sadly a bog standard Kona EV. U.S. startup Lightship has successfully closed its Series B funding round with a total of $34 million in the bank. It aims to bring an EV-friendly travel trailer to market that includes its own battery pack and drivetrain, which makes towing it long distance far easier for EVs. Just one week after Volkswagen lowered the prices of some of its models in Europe, Tesla has followed suit, slashing the cost of some Model Y variants by up to 9%. It seems to suggest we'll see a continuation of the EV price war that started last year. If you're in Las Vegas, you'll likely be familiar with the various autonomous vehicles passing through the city. But now Teledrive service Vey has flipped the switch on its remote control vehicle service. You can now order a completely remotely driven car to take you where you want to go. 
Toyota's European development boss has thrown cold water on the idea of Toyota producing an affordable entry-level EV anytime soon for the European market. Citing battery costs, the executive said that batteries are just too expensive for affordable EVs to exist yet. Northvolt has officially committed to building its new Gigafactory production facility at Haida in Germany. As we reported last week, it plans to produce upwards of 60 gigawatt hours of cells per year and it will be the third battery factory to be built by Northvolt in Europe. Storedot has unveiled what it says is a new concept that will accelerate the integration of its extreme fast charging cells into production electric vehicles, a cell to pack design it's calling iBeam XFC. The company says it already has many patents covering its proprietary design. The UK city of Oxford has officially launched its first all-electric bus service. The largest fleet of electric buses outside of London, 159 electric buses, some double-deckers, will serve the city and surrounding areas. Here's to more bus fleets going all-electric. Airbus has confirmed that it has completed the first successful power-on test for the entire fuel cell stack and drivetrain at the heart of its promised Zero-E airplane propulsion system. The full system outputted a total of 1.2 megawatts of power per motor. BYD held its dream day this week at which it showcased a new artificial intelligence system that it says will be integrated into future vehicles. The AI system will be used to both enhance in-car experience as well as give BYD's future vehicles more autonomous capabilities. If you're wanting to get behind the wheel of a Hyundai Ioniq 6 and you are in the US, you might want to pay attention to this one. The company is now offering up to $7,500 in cash on hood deals for new customers, which means it now undercuts the Tesla Model 3's pricing. The US federal government has confirmed that it's investing $148.8 million US dollars in repairing and replacing nearly 4,500 existing EV charging stations in the US. Frankly, it is about time the existing infrastructure gets some much needed love. And finally, for the short shorts, Mazda, despite not currently offering any EV for sale in North America, has confirmed that yes, it's going to use NAX J3400 on future EVs. We're just wondering when those new models will launch, eh? The annual COP conference on climate change and what nations of the world should do about it has long been criticised for making grandiose statements that legally amount to very little. Last year, during COP28, the conference came under additional criticism, not only because it was hosted by one of the world's largest oil-producing nations, but also because of statements made by the host's president over the world potentially going back to living in caves if society moved to ban fossil fuels entirely. Now there is a new controversy, namely that COP29, which by the way is hosted by Azerbaijan, another oil producing nation, the committee announced for organising the event is entirely made up of men. Given that one half of the world's population are women and that at COP28, it was very careful to note that, quote, indigenous peoples, local communities and governments, women and youth and children, end quote, all play a part to bring about a more sustainable and equitable future for us. It's not just disappointing, but frankly, enraging. And finally, Ever since Ford unveiled the F-150 Lightning electric pickup, there's been a pretty consistent question over if Ford would ever make the F-150 Lightning an off-road capable truck similar to the F-150 Raptor. This week, the company answered that question by unveiling a one-off custom F-150 Lightning called the Lightning Switchgear. Built in collaboration with Ford Performance, RTR Vehicles and famous rally driver Vaughn Gittin Jr., the truck has heavily modified custom suspension, an adjustable ride height that varies between 5 inches on road and 13 and a half inches off road, and underbody protection, as well as a good rollover cage. If the thought of a massive three tons or more of metal jumping off road thrills you, this is probably the electric truck for you. Personally, though, while I do think it's kind of neat from an engineering perspective, 
I'd rather have a functional work truck I can haul animal feed and wood in. And on that note, we are in fact done for the day. As always, a massive thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. Plus, if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency, either through solar on the roof of your home or by joining a local community solar project, or in fact, by getting a heat pump installed. As usual, we would all love it if you'd consider supporting us from $1 a month on Patreon, which is about $10.08 a year with discounts. It really does make a massive difference, especially now that YouTube is no longer really paying out decent money for videos. Look at how many creators are giving up YouTube altogether. And without our Patreon supporters, we'd frankly not be here because for some reason we can't get onto Nebula. We'd love to make the lovely Kate Walton Elliott full time, for example, but we honestly cannot afford that without additional support. So if you can, please consider making a donation. As well, don't forget to buy Erin's latest amazing design, Electric for All. It's our new January exclusive t-shirt design in the merch store, and she's planning a new design for every month of the year. It's already February's design on the way, and uh, it's really, really good. Don't worry, every month's t-shirt will stick around the month after it's ended in our store. So you'll still be able to buy all of the t-shirts this time next year. I will be back next week as usual, but don't forget that we publish every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So until next time, stay safe, be an ally, be kind, stay warm if you're in the Northern Hemisphere because it's very cold right now. And as always, keep evolving.